Hi, my name is Kay Sutha. I am a business strategist and I will be your host. In this podcast, I'll be getting raw, real and relentless whilst interviewing successful entrepreneurs from all over the world who specialize in different aspects of business. We'll cover the five main pillars of business, which are sales, marketing, finance, operations and leadership. But not forgetting mindset, live and digital events, plus much, much more. You'll gain insights, tips and tricks and discover jaw-dropping actionable steps that you'll be able to put in place for your business right away. Guys, I have a super, super amazing guest for us today on this show. He has over 15 years of experience coaching and training individuals, small groups and companies. For the first part of his professional career, he owned and ran, get this guys, a health and fitness studio where he helped people improve their lives, such as reversing type 2 diabetes, not to go down the kidney dialysis, losing 100 pounds, eliminating chronic pain, and much, much more. He now coaches entrepreneurs and small business owners to create both a business and personal life that they love. His mission is to help others unlock freedom and potential to live a fulfilling life of appreciation without regret, guys. He is here today to share with us how to manage the emotional roller coaster and stress that can come from running a business. And oh my goodness, do we know that, right? The emotion that comes from running a business is insane. Please welcome David Weaver, business owner, coach, husband, and a dad. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Now, there is so many things that, you know, our audience are going to want to know about, right? Firstly, how do you manage, you know, with the, your personal life and business, how you got into business? Like there's so many things to talk about here. But firstly, what we'll go into is finding out before you even had your fitness business, right? What were you doing then? And how did you get into that? Yeah, great question. So I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that I wanted to do something meaningful. And so uh, I spent a lot of time like trying to figure that out, like a whole bunch of different ideas. Like I actually almost joined the army at one point as I was like, oh, I'll go be in special forces. That sounds cool. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> wow. But yeah, so before I started my fitness business, um, I was working in IT for an engineering company. So I was doing tech stuff and I just... I got lucky. I knew somebody. I got into the work. Um, you know, I was young, so I could pick it, pick it up quickly and wow. just like learn all the technology stuff. Um, but after a while, I was so bored. <laughs> I was completely wow. bored. And um, so, you know, I, that's when I was like, okay, what are all my options? I was like, be a firefighter. Should I do all this thing. Um, so finally, I, I decided to pursue the health and fitness world. Um, and started like my education process and actually started my, my business while working in the IT um, job and then slowly worked myself out of that job into full time. So what got you into the fitness um, industry? What spoke about that industry that you thought, yeah, this is what I'm going to do? I think that there are a few different things. Um, one, I was always active, like I played soccer and I loved like weightlifting class in high school and um <clears throat> excuse me um and but then also like i'm really interested in health because my mom has an autoimmune disease and so i think that like exploration of of that and like kind of figuring out what is, what is going on here with this health piece and then also just like my natural love of being outside and being active and doing that it just felt like a good a good match and it also felt purposeful like i could do something that mattered Right. Okay. I see. Um, see, the reason why I ask that question is I always find that when people want to go down a certain industry is because someone close to them was struggling with something in their area and they want to find out more. Right. Mm -hmm. And now you said that your mom had an autoimmune and it's funny that you said that because my mom has an autoimmune too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with nutrition and fitness every time. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's pretty amazing that you've done that. So what is it that you do right now? So now I work with small business owners to, to help them 
in a number of different ways. I would say like the three main ways are like, okay, we're going to look at your health because obviously that's my history and my past and it's important. Um, but why I kind of moved to what I'm doing now is to like evolve that into something more. And my favorite part of that is to like really dig into what's important to you and then like, how are you thinking and how are you, how are you relating to your world? So my, one of my favorite phrases that my, one of my friends says and colleagues is, we create how we relate to everything in our lives. Okay, okay, I like that. Yeah, so, so you know, we get, we get to choose what that is. And so uh, and that's part of the like, you know, de-stressing and, and getting off of that roller coaster is, is the awareness that comes from that piece. Um, and then also there's all the strategy that goes with the business stuff. And I love how all these things are like intertwined with each other. And it's like, can be like a lot, but my, my superpower is to come in and like simplify and like, okay, let's get clarity. Yes. Now moving on to that, right. Your superpower is being able to eliminate stress and create peace, right? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. the hell do you do that when building a business? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it. It seems like it's really, really difficult and maybe it is, but it's because we've been programmed and have these unconscious patterns that are hardwired into us from a very young age. And so we've, we have these patterns and these default things that we go to every time um, that create that and set that up. And so it's a matter of identifying those things mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> beginning in the process a lot for a lot of it is like we have these limiting beliefs and fears and then uh creating forgiveness around that for ourselves right okay. and then creating now new powerful declarations and ways of seeing the world so with the end goal of basically being like untriggerable so like ah. all these triggers that are setting us off and creating all this anxiety and stress and everything like that yeah. can be transmuted so that it, they're not and then we can live from a place of peace instead of like letting just everything come at us and affect us but then I mean if we completely eliminate stress right how do we know or how do we keep ourselves on track to make sure we're doing things because doesn't stress kind of help us and make sure that you know we're not just kind of just wandering around or we're not too laid back that's it we get too laid back, right? If we don't have stress, we've got to make sure we're on top of things. So if we completely eliminate that, does things still get done? Yeah, that's a, that's an awesome question. So <clears throat> to clarify a little bit first, okay. I'm talking about eliminating chronic negative stress. Uh, okay. So there is you stress, which is positive. Like, oh, you get a new client maybe, and you're excited about it, but you're a little stressed out. Like, oh, like, like that's a, that's a useful type of stress. And it's not something that's like constantly day after day after day where you're like, it's, you know, bringing you down. Uh -huh. um, so there is so, good stress and bad stress. Yeah. There, it's called you stress and distress. Uh, oh, okay. I've not heard of that term. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Okay. So yeah, but a little bit about how that works. Right. And how do you yeah. identify you stress to, to bad stress? Yeah. So the simplest way is that our bodies are hardwired for truth. Mm. So if you feel right. distress, you're going to feel that like constriction, that like, uh, like you, you feel it, right? You know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. That anxiety, <laughs> that like overwhelm that, oh, this, I'm so stressed out, but that, that constricts. But when you feel that, like what I was just talking about, that ex maybe a little bit of excitement stress yeah. it's different it, it feels like oh like I can't like I'm not sure about this it's like a little stress but it feels good and exciting so you, okay. you you know you intuitively know if you really just take a look and examine like what's going on here okay awesome and I have to get clarification on that because people don't know the difference right yeah. people just think stress is stress and it's all bad the minute you feel yeah. stress um, right so and that's yeah. yeah. And just one more thing to put in there, because I don't want to say like, oh, you're just never going to be stressed out ever again. But it's more about like when the stressor comes, you see it, the trigger, whatever it is, it's how quickly can you move through that? It's not that you're never going to have a stressful situation again, but it's not letting it derail you for the rest of the day or the rest of the week or the whatever. It's like, 
allowing yourself to process through that. Oh, interesting. Hey, what's going on here? Is it really like, you know, all these things that happen and then move through it so that um, you're not like carrying that weight around. I see. Now, the, the other question that raises, right, is mm -hmm. it kind of seems impossible to, to eliminate stress, right? It kind of feels yeah. like um, this is going to take a lot of work, mm -hmm. right? Years and years, maybe, because of all the other baggage that we've been carrying around us. How long does it actually take for this to actually work for us? It can happen much faster than we think. <clears throat> okay. So the 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 thing is like we just have to be open to the possibility that that can happen and so if we if we're clinging to this like oh this is going to take forever yeah then it's probably going to take a while but if we can open ourselves up even just a little bit like well, well what if this could be quick what if i could like work through these things you know and not have them not carry them around anymore and yeah. so yeah it, it is possible, but it does vary from person to person on how quickly you want to work through and like how many things are, you know, it depends on like those core limiting beliefs, <clears throat> creating forgiveness around those then opens up everything else. Okay. So tell me this then, what qualifies you an expert around eliminating stress? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> well, for one, I've spent like, even in the, the fitness industry, just like my entire life is around like human behavior change, right? right? And so when you're teaching somebody how to transform who they are, th mm -hmm. that is, has a lot more to do with like losing weight or getting healthy than actually like the reps and sets that you're doing in the gym. It's right. much more about that. So I would say that I've been helping people transform their lives for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I always have sought out like people who, are the best to go learn from so then I can pass that on down. And, and I'm not like one for, I've done a bunch of certifications and all these things, and but I don't really care about the paper that much. It's more about like, are you actually helping people get results? Right, so yes. I would say that I am helping people get results and that's the thing that qualifies me the most more than anything else that really matters. I love that. And that brings me to the next question actually. Um, will you be able to teach a principle right now to our audience that they can relate to and apply immediately to their life and their business? Yes, absolutely. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. Stress is 100% created by our thoughts. Ah. That's it. What? That's it. So that first phrase that I said we create how we relate to everything. Right. So if we choose to see something as in the way, hard, difficult, an obstacle, stressful, then it is. That same thing, we can choose a different story. We can choose like, oh, this is in the way. This is an opportunity. Oh, what can I learn from this? Actually, this could just be easier. We can, we can literally choose. So like a good example is like, if you think about uh, road rage, right? Yes. <laughs> and people, maybe you see somebody and they're just driving like a crazy person and you're getting so upset and you're like, what are they doing? Like, this is, this is not okay. And you're getting like, like really mad and stressed out about it. Right. Okay. Well, so that's a story we're telling, like they're being rude. They're not being considerate of other people. Like, but another story could be they're on the way to the hospital with a pregnant wife in the car. Ooh. And you, we have no idea. Like we literally don't know what's going on most of the time, but we create stories constantly. Our brains are story making machines. Like this is what we do <laughs> all day long is make up story. So once you realize that, you can realize that you can make a different story. Ah. And okay. so it's, it's very, it's like, what? That's too easy. That's too simple. But that's the same thing that comes back to like, well, can we, can we really like eliminate all this stuff? Yes. But the first thing is just to notice that you're doing it okay. and then stop and say like, is this actually true? A, do we mm. even know? Can we even know if it's true? And B, is this serving me at all? And if it's not, e. then we can change the story. We can do, we can tell something else. Ah, okay. I'm so glad you pointed um, those things out there because I was going to ask, like, you know, when you get into habits and you've been doing it for years and years, how 
just changing your thoughts like that that's pretty difficult to do right yes. and you're not aware of it so you said the first thing is to do is to make sure that you become aware of what you're doing and what your thoughts are yeah yeah, yeah. and then secondly once you know that then just reverse it not necessarily but be, just be curious about it ah okay so it's the awareness and the noticing and so an easy example, an easy thing that you could do is like write down all the times you got triggered over the past week. Ah, and then like, this is an exercise you can do and like write down and be like, okay, now it's even after the fact, but go back and just with curiosity, think about each of those situations and see what's, re what's really there. Oh, I like it. Like journaling almost. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and so sometimes that's, e that's much easier than like doing it in the moment. Cause that takes practice. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a little bit of, of work to remember to like pause, breathe, yep. like, huh, that's interesting. Why am I getting so upset about this? Usually you're just like, no, I'm mad. Like right. <laughs> whatever exactly. it is. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So reflection, go back and reflect on how your day has been, how your week has been, um, jot it down and see how you can have done things differently. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I love that. I love it. And I always find that when you put things um, to pen to paper, you always get a lot more clarity. Yeah. You know, for sure. So do you have a few recent success stories that we could hear about? Yeah, absolutely. So I've got a couple. Um, the first one, her name is, is Courtney and she's one of my clients. She came to, to see me because she was actually in like transition. Um, this is it's kind of a, a unique person because this doesn't happen that often but she she came to me and she's like david i hit all my goals this year already and i'm like what right <laughs> like that's weird first of all but then she's like but i need help with purpose like i don't i don't know where to go next right. um and so and this relates to stress in in a in a different sort of way but um she so like what she didn't know what to do. She didn't get clarity on moving forward. So we, we went through and we spent like a bunch of time digging into like, okay, what's actually most important to you? What are your core values? Not what other people say should be important to you. Right. That's easy to do, <laughs> um, you know? And like digging into all this deeper stuff and just taking some time to do that. Cause we, we're just so busy. We don't take the time to do that, but taking the time to do that. And then all of a sudden uh, we just, boom, super, super clarity. It makes decision-making so easy. It eliminates a ton of stress because all of the chaos that typically is happening in our life mm -hmm. is because we're not grounded in the foundational stuff because ah. we're too busy to take the time to look at that. But if you're like, okay, I know this is one of my core values and you have a big decision coming up and you're like, should I do this or should I, I do that? But then you compare it to all this foundational stuff. It's so much easier. You're like, oh, well, that doesn't line up with that. So no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, or, or yes, it totally does. So this seems like a great fit because this is like part of who I am. Um, so anyway, it's been really fun with her and helping her move in that direction. Um, and then this other person that I'm working with, it's actually a father-son duo and they're uh, attorneys. And so um, we've been working a lot with them and, and the son is who I want to talk about because um, he's, he's struggled with some addiction things and really like getting angry and upset about a lot, a lot of stuff. Right. And, uh, it's been such a fun unfolding and transformation to work with him. And like, typically, you know, like get on the call, like, Hey, how you doing? Like, eh, I don't know. Okay. You know, how and is then, his son? His son is, uh, in his late twenties or early thirties. Okay. All right. Yeah. Got it. So he's yeah. got a lot of baggage. So you're working with both of them on different Working with both of them on different things. Yeah. Right. Um, and some stuff together, like the business stuff together, but yeah, separately with his son. And so, um, but as we've been working together, it, it's just amazing. Like hops on the phone, like, Hey, how you doing? Great. Like, what? Tell me about that. What's going on? And like, you know, <laughs> all these different things where he he's becoming that like untriggerable, all these things and realizing like more about how he operates and who he is. He's very introverted. Oh, and okay. I find that introverted people are really hard on themselves because yeah. the social norms and expectations that we typically have are like, yeah. not they don't necessarily jive. And so like just allowing yourself to be like, hey, that's okay, <laughs> right? Yeah. And just creating more and more of that peace um, has been just a, an amazing transformational process. Oh, wow, that is amazing. 
Um, and I guess when you're working with um, these clients, that you, there's probably things that you've identified that weren't they weren't even aware of themselves, right? Yeah. And so yeah. then do you get to work on that or do you only work with the things that they want to work on? Yeah, I mean, so like I it, it's a both. Okay. It's a little bit of both because I think one of the big values of coaching and having a coaching is to have somebody see what you're not seeing. Yes. And, and I've had that experience myself with, and I, cause I work with coaches. I have my own coach. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. It, it brings a different perspective in, right. And yeah. sometimes you need to, you need to have someone else tell you this because you're not always going to see, um, you know, I guess what you don't want to see or what you're not aware of. Um, and so having that definitely helps. And again, this is why people have coaches, right? Yeah. That's, that's why they go and hire coaches because you do need to see that other side of things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of my, one of my favorite um, terms that we use is called the care frontation. Okay. And I think it's a very unique thing that we as coaches get the opportunity to do because nobody else really in our life has that role probably right. because yes. you don't want your spouse or your significant <laughs> other to be your care frontation person, you don't, you know, right. but it's somebody who's like going to call you out on your BS and like, okay. oh then, my, yeah. you know, I know all about, oh my goodness. So I have coaches, I have mentors and I've found, you know, those coaches that tell you to your face, being completely raw and real and say, you know what, get your head out of your ass are yeah. the ones that have actually made me move and do something and see progression, right? right? Um, right. But yes, I mean, it's not for everyone because some people, I guess, don't like, you know, that, um, that uh, would you call it confrontation? We, we call it care frontation. care frontation. So it's coming from a place of caring about the person so much that you, you call them up, right. you call it up, not call them out, call them up. Right. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, I guess you're going to be one of those people that will actually will be okay with that. Yeah. But, and that's where the art comes in okay. to the coaching because it's, it looks different depending on who I'm talking to. Mm. Right. Ah. So you shift to whatever person they are, right? And work with the language and communication that they, they are comfortable with. For sure. Like that's 27 year old guy that I was talking about is not the same as my like 50 year old female. Right. That's not the same conversation. Okay. Yeah. So you're continuously customizing to work with your clients the way they feel comfortable is not just one fit all, basically. No. I, I have always, always, always believed in individualization, mm -hmm. even all the way through my fitness days. And I think more importantly, it's really just about the connection now. Uh -huh. It's just like connecting with that person on their level and where they're at right. and then meeting them there. Okay. I love that. Amazing. So I know at this point, people are probably thinking, how the hell do I get hold of David? I need him, <laughs> right? Um, and so where can people go to receive some additional free support or get hold of you want to get on a call with you? Where can they go for all that good stuff? Yeah, so just simple, easy. DavidWeaverCoach.com is mm -hmm. my website. You can go there and just in the, the very bottom, scroll down and just send me a message. Um, there's, there's two different things. One is... Uh, I have a free part one in the workbook, which is this uncovered. We actually didn't even get to this, but um, my favorite question is what makes you feel alive? And so right. what I found is like talking to people all the time. They're like, I'm not really sure actually. Huh? And so I created a workbook because I think that that's the start to asking yourself those questions that then lead to yeah. the values conversation to the then, then to make all those decisions so you're not so stressed out and you're actually doing stuff that you enjoy and love and feeling fulfilled. Um, so I am happy to give that away. I've got part one of that workbook for free. We love free stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so in your, in your message, just say, I want, the, I want the workbook or whatever, and I'll send that to you. Um, and then also, if you're like, I would like to talk to you about possibly how you might be able to help me, um, then I'm happy to also do a free discovery call with anybody that's interested. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Guys, you heard it here. If you want to get hold of David, make sure you go to his website. If you didn't catch it here, I will be putting it down below in the show notes. So make sure you scroll down, make sure you speak with David, get on a call with him. 
um, get its free support, guys. Oh, my goodness, it's right there for you at your hands. Go ahead and contact him for the playbook that he's got for you guys. Get in contact with him. If you do not start making a change now, guys, you're going to end up going around this hamster wheel, doing the same things that you've been doing. You're not going to see any change. So make sure you take action now. David, thank you so much for coming on to the show. It was so amazing to have you here. So many golden nuggets. Um, and thanks again. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a great privilege to be here. Thank you for your time and listening to Uncensored Society podcast. All resources mentioned throughout the episode will be added to the show notes and you'll be able to find them at the bottom as you scroll down. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and leave a review in iTunes. Thank you once again.